Hello, this is Marcela Bovio from Dark Horse, White Horse, and you are listening to The Progcast. Welcome back to another episode of the broadcast. Um, before we dive into uh, dark, ho dark horse, white horse stuff with uh, today's guest Marcela Bovio, I just wanted to uh, use this opportunity to um, make uh, some announcements because we had so many episodes in the last weeks and I didn't really have the time to, um, yeah, to tell you about all these changes that we just did with the broadcast because now we have like in these times we have two episodes every week on Mondays and, and Thursdays because there's so many amazing albums uh, coming out so much amazing music getting released plus we have a very new format which is the Friday top five and my co-host and producer Randy M. Salo is hosting this every Friday Three minutes, just the five most important and or our uh, picks of the most important prog releases every week on Fridays. That was it with a quick announcement. Now I want to give a very warm welcome to Marcella. Hi, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and uh, we already heard that you have a new band, which is called A Dark Horse White Horse. Two. Um, and uh, you have one single out right now. Um, as we're recording this, it's out on YouTube. And once this episode is released, it's also out on the streaming platforms. And the song is called Black Hole. Yeah. And... Uh, It is a very exciting project, I think. And maybe you want to tell us a little bit how you guys got together. Who is involved? Well, uh, basically, uh, the core of this project is basically myself, Jort Otto, who you might know from uh, Revamp and Fur and My Propane, and uh, uh, Ruben Weiche, who you might know also from Revamp and from Blackbriar. Um, so basically... Uh, it, I think it was like two or three years ago, I, I had just left Fear, uh, and Jord was um, joining me and the rest of Mayan for a couple of shows, uh, substituting uh, Merel Bechtel. Um, and we were talking about like being in bands and leaving those bands, you know, like circumstances of life that we both can relate to. And then he said like, so... Um, Ruben and I have been working on these tracks. Maybe you want to, you know, work on them with us. And then he showed me some things. He had some tracks on his phone. And I was like, oh, my God, this is really cool. So, um, and especially because then I had a lot of time in my hands. Then uh, uh, I said, like, yeah, let's do it. And I think, um, I mean, I started writing right away. And, and, and uh, yeah, now we're here. I mean... Some th things, a few unfortunate things happening in the meantime. <laughs> so it's a couple of years later, but uh, finally here we are. <laughs> yes, I feel the, I feel the the the, the music is I, I I I don't know I from the one song that I heard Black Hole is uh, that that I feel excitement through the music. Yeah. Um, And, cool. and 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 I was uh, yeah it, it it took me a little bit by surprise I mean you had uh, announced this project for a while already the website was there the mailing list and the people in the mailing list got a got it a little bit in advance um, yeah. uh, so so it has been out there for a while but I was not really aware of it and uh, so so it took it took me by surprise and I thought this. Um, mix of yeah it starts with a quite technical riff and then at one point it goes into like into to a bridge that is like symphony x back when they were really proggy like 20 years ago <laughs> i love that reference <laughs> <laughs> well i think that's the beauty
beautiful the beauty of this um collaboration is that we three i mean i know i mean i make my i know my music and i know what yort makes on his own and i know what ruben makes on his own but i think the three of us together created something very specific you know and it, it's indeed very technical but also i mean and and also has a you know a fair amount of busyness hectic Ness and dissonance, which I really love, um, and I make it a little bit, you know, <laughs> a little bit pretty. No, because um, I, I think it's really funny that I've been, I've been getting quite a few comments like, "Oh, you know, at that beginning, I expected some really like, like really brutal vocals, but then, then you get me." <laughs> so, but I think um, uh, for me, it's very nice to uh, to be able to collaborate in, in something because I love. Prague. I love Prague. It's in my heart. And I love really technical music, but I don't write well in technical music myself. So um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, uh, your introduction to the, I would say, uh, yeah, European Prague scene was in 2004, obviously, with the human yeah. equation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that was a quite a proggy entrance to, to, the, to the music scene. Proggy <laughs> entrance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Oh, my God. I mean, that was um, it, it doesn't get much more progier than that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, and a fairy tale because I have been a fan of Aryan for years, you know, and um, it, 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 to be able to sing on that album next to like David Breaking Thousand, Townsend mm -hmm. and Mike Ockerfeld and James Debris, it was like, what? <laughs> yeah, mind them. Actually, as we're recording this uh, this afternoon, we just released the podcast episode with Devin Townsend. Ah! <laughs> you know, I was I was like super starstruck because we never met him uh, until I don't I don't know. It was I think maybe like five years ago? We were at Proc Power USA, and mm -hmm. he was there in the backstage, uh, and I was there with the Gentle Storm. You know, on the Confa Hears, right? Yes. And of course, they know each other really well. And uh, we went to the back. She's like, she was like, uh, should we go talk to them? And I'm like, yeah. Um, and I, I told him like, uh, well, I don't know if you remember this, but we were in an album together. <laughs> and he's like, I know. I listened to True Fashion all the time. I'm like, oh my god. So yeah, it was super cool. He, he said that because <laughs> because I was asking him if he kind of like, keeps up to date with mo with modern prog metal what's happening in the scene and he was like no not at all <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he made an exception for a stream of passion maybe yeah <laughs> i don't know maybe Aryan sent him some stuff i don't know but i was just like oh my god but yeah big fan of course so <laughs> so yeah the stream of passion years uh have been uh yeah are in the past as well already and you've been releasing two solo albums in the meantime if i saw that right that were a bit on the mellower side i actually just listened to them this afternoon uh to prepare for this interview because i i knew they were out there but i never really took the time to to search for them and 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 to uh, dig into them and so so i uh was uh surprised to find the the first one was very string quartet driven yeah and the just a string quartet and myself and the yes. second one was with lots of piano as well but yeah. also totally acoustic um so uh that was the last two big releases with uh, your lead vocals if i see that right yes correct you could say that i mean Although... there's there's you, you you've been featured in a lot of uh projects for a song yeah. or two here and there um but they, they were like the full full album with your lead vocals um yes. those were the two last things from you and now yeah speaking of full-length albums so uh and and trying to come back to uh dark horse white horse so far yes. the one single is out what uh, what can we expect and when can we expect it <laughs> <laughs> well um listen um 
without getting into much detail, I think the people who know me from social media, I am I am very very open and very honest about what's going on in my life. And uh, I think most people know that I've just gone through a very rough time because I was diagnosed with cancer last year. And then I had to undergo a very heavy treatment that I'm very lucky was successful. And I hope it stays that way. <laughs> so, I mean, um, but um, so at that point we had, we had five songs. So, uh, and we were recording those five songs. I was about to go into the studio and then I got this news. So it was, you know, like the whole recording just got um, postponed. Um, I ended up recording the tracks while I was in chemotherapy. Uh, oh, wow. because, because I was afraid, yeah, I was afraid of uh, that my voice was going to change afterwards. Um, so I, I got a nice microphone and I recorded everything from here, from home. Um, luckily, I feel like my voice hasn't had an impact, so that's great. But, um, uh, I mean, that means that, um, I think end of last year I, I recorded them. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, of course everything has taken a long time, uh, but we have an EP and that EP, I hope, um, we can be releasing somewhere early next year. Yes. And, uh, next month, uh, I have another, uh, uh, single in the planning, uh, that it happens to be my favorite song. So yeah, very excited about how you guys will like it. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that sounds, that sounds exciting indeed. Um, yeah, you, you just mentioned your, um, sickness and that you're back now that you managed to beat it for now congratulations and i'm super happy thank you for you and with you and uh, actually it was your birthday two days ago three days ago yeah is that right so happy birthday thank you <laughs> yeah you know it's been uh, it's been a roller coaster but an experience that i have uh, learned a lot from and uh, yeah i'm glad that i can look back and not see it's just like a a horrible period, but also something that I think actually made me a little bit of a better person. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, going back to your artistic uh, or your life or your life as an artist, as a singer, um, these last years, I mean, apart from these two solo albums, as I said, you were featured in a lot of bands. I, actually, I've never checked out Mayan so far and, and I've never had the chance to see them live. But I mean, I've, see, I've seen you live with um, Gentle Storm and uh, with um, Fear maybe as well. Did you sing? No, uh, no I, you... didn't, I didn't make it to the stage. Ah, okay. You didn't, <laughs> yeah, but, but you were involved with this project for a time as well. For a little while, yeah. yeah. But basically, right in the middle of recordings, I decided that um, that it was not that it was not for me. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, I have to say that that was a very hard period. And I'm mentioning this uh, because uh, around that period, I started writing the songs for Dark Horse, White Horse, and because I was in a very dark place, they are all pretty, pretty freaking dark. So, um, I mean, also something that, uh, at the moment was, you know, very bad, very negative, but left us with something really cool. But, um, um, yeah, Mayan, I do see like something also that is more me, you know, we're with five singers, so it's <laughs> quite a, <laughs> quite a spectacle. I think the, the live show is really fun. Um, and hopefully, if COVID-19 allows, we will get back there at some point. And, um, I mean, if, if you guys that are listening, have never been to a Mayan show, I think, I think you will be pleasantly surprised because just, there's just a lot of fun. I mean, we have a lot of fun and, um, it's just all great people. And I think you can see that we get along really, really well. And for the last album, uh, even though I'm not on the lead all the time, I did write a lot of, melodies and a lot of lyrics for myself and also for uh, some of the other singers. So I do feel, even though it's not all me, I do feel like it's also 
a release of mine instead of just something okay. that I sung. And that, that, that's that, that, for, for example, I, I I never knew that. I just thought it yeah. was one of your project where where you kind of lend your voice to. I mean, and and you um, you, you what you also did in the last years was sing live with Arian. Yes. <laughs> oh, so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um yeah, that was that I was able to see live um the oh. Aryan universe and the Intergalactic Castle live. What I uh watched live on stream was actually you singing in Wacken with Demons and Wizards. Oh yes. <laughs> so yeah. what what I'm trying to say is or, or, or what, what I kind of noticed that you were involved in many projects where you were not really the yeah, center of attention, the only lead singer. So and now seeing you back with your own band um yeah, that's kind of it's kind of cool. It's um I think so too. Uh <laughs> Although I have to say, you know, the thing is, I really enjoy performing with a group of people that are just great. I feel very privileged <laughs> that I get to be part of these shows where every single musician and every singer is just like top notch. For me, that's kind of like one of the big aspirations, you know, like I'm not I'm not in it to take over the world and uh Whatever. Um, but it, besides writing my own music and performing my own music, I really enjoy that kind of thing. You know, it's like, uh, like uh, take Arian. I mean, Arian just like handpicks <laughs> the cherries from the pie, man. He's like uh, the the very best, and that is just so amazing. It's so nice to be part of that. And you, Plus, uh, I will do anything Arian tells me. Also, <laughs> I mean, anything that Arian asks me to do, I will probably do. That's why I ended up um, dancing. I was just, I was just <laughs> dancing as a devil. <laughs> I was just gonna say that there was this video coming out like a week ago or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was before I, I I got my diagnosis. So it was before all the all that shitty stuff. Um, uh, but I, you know, I used to dance when I was. Uh, a little girl like and, and I was used to be in dance classes when I was like 10 12 so when he suggests when he said like yeah I would like to do some choreography I'm like yeah let's do it and it was so hard <laughs> so hard like we had this friend of Caroline who plays the other fury she knew a choreographer and then we got together and she was like okay you're gonna do this and this and then this and then you kick and her leg goes like right up in the air I'm like Okay. So it's just like 20 seconds and it was the most devastating 20 seconds <laughs> ever. But uh, I really like how it came out. <laughs> the yeah. only thing I, I think, are you, uh, I mean, I don't think you would mind, but the only thing is that I, I refused to wear um, red latex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> and so, Aryan, I will do anything for you, but I won't. Do that. Wear red latex. <laughs> <laughs> little trivia for you. So, uh, how, how do you like the new Aryan album? Trans, it is. I, but I'm, I'm so biased because. <laughs> Maybe uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm very, I'm always biased because I love him and I love his music, and um, I get, I got to know the songs. I don't, I know the songs already for a really long time because I don't know if you know this, but I. Um, he also asked me to, besides sing, besides singing my own parts, to sing guide vocals for most of the singers. So um, I already knew the songs uh, from way, way before. Uh, so uh, the, there is some enchantment to see everything coming together, mm -hmm. you know, because he first yeah. makes like very basic demos. And then all the voices come together and all the instrumentation comes together. So... Yeah. <laughs> so I really like. Actually, when I when I heard it for the first time, when I listened for the first time, I was like, it it, um, obviously being a long time Aryan fan and not discovering Aryan with the Human Equation back in two thousand four, um, I I had the feeling that the the narration was uh, disrupting the musical flow at some points or or very often, and then. 
like yeah i listened to it uh, like maybe three three weeks or so before the release with the promo uh copy i got and then i was a little bit mm, i don't know and then just like last week or something i i went somewhere and put it on spotify on my phone and um and i suddenly was like okay yeah i'm in the cheesy musical mood <laughs> and then you're it, in the vibe yeah i i do get that um i mean i think that you definitely have to hear this i have to listen to this album as something more than just the music like you know the 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 basically the whole experience because and it's it's like uh um yeah so if you're just expecting an album and the music i can get that it's like oh you get out of the uh, if you put it in the background, for instance, like to listen to while you're doing something else, I can imagine the narration being disruptive. But it's just so, I think you just have to, have to go like for the full thing, <laughs> <laughs> like read the story um, and just go with the story and see it more as the narrative that it is than maybe just an album, you know? Um, I believe that, well, basically his intention was to make a movie out of it so i think that that explains a lot of the choices that were made yeah Yeah. i'm not gonna put words on his mouth though (laughs) (laughs) he he he, uh he told us himself in our little video interview that we released last week actually Ah. (laughs) on our youtube channel the pro space youtube channel um yeah super cool to to have you back with your lead vocals for a project that is completely your own and with the other two um, guys, uh, Jord and Ruben. Actually, on the first single, Black Hole, there's two more guys playing. Oh, uh, and, <laughs> and what, what amazing guys they are. No, I, yes. uh, I, was, uh, I know Arjen from Bezebeek, of course, from Epica and from Mayan because we've uh, played together quite a few times with Mayan. And I asked him because I, I mean, he is, I mean, of course, and again, biased, but he's just, I think one of the best out there, you know, he is a machine and, uh, and just an amazing player. I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted every time that we play with Mayan at <laughs> what he does because no one can do it like that. So I was very lucky that he accepted to play drums in our, uh, in our uh, EP, uh, it's just amazing, amazing. And yeah, uh, yeah and I knew his name, or yeah, from reputation. But as I said, I never really saw um, Mayan live. Or but just judging from the playthrough video, I could tell that he's the real deal. <laughs> I think I think you will be if you if you listen to Mayan, if you dig into Mayan, you will be pretty amazed at what he does. Uh, you know, in the in the shows, there's always a couple of moments where uh, a couple of songs. There's a co- there's a song called uh, "Human Sacrifice" that it's very brutal and has a lot of blast beats. And uh, live, he always goes a little bit more over the edge and just like you know, like blasting and filling and going completely bananas. And it's just it's just such a treat to see him play all the time. <laughs> So we actually have to hold him back <laughs> for, these, <laughs> wow. for these tracks because, I mean, you've heard it. It's There's so much going on, so much um, in the guitars and in the keys and everything. It's just like, wham. Um, so, yeah, he held, he held back a little bit, I think. <laughs> um, and on bass guitar, uh, we have uh, Siva uh, Sapkins. And Siva is um, an ex-student uh from the metal factory. I don't know if you know this, but I, I teach vocals at a school here in Eindhoven in the Netherlands that is completely focused on metal music. And uh, Siva is just one of the, our most amazing students, you know, and uh, he had been auditioning for years before he was old enough to get into the school. <laughs> Already amaz- amazing everyone in, in, in his auditions. And... Uh, I just did such a fantastic job on the bass. Uh, and, um, well, um, I don't know if you know, uh, Destiny Potato, he's, he's stored with Destiny Potato also. I saw him with <laughs> Destiny Potato um, yeah! uh, a couple of years ago at the Takeover Days Festival. 
um but at that time he was 17 i think and uh i was I, that, that was like the the whole performance of the whole band also with arno from uneven uh unexpected not uh, uneven structure yes i know from our name structure right yeah that was like yeah i'm I, jealous I, I, just saw I, 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 didn't I, see. <laughs> i didn't know what 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 to expect uh, really i just I, i actually just knew that uh david maxi mitchy's solo stuff and so they they blew me away and especially siba and uh Yeah, a great guy, and I was so happy to see to see him playing with you this amazing music. Um, so yeah, it's that... like the the perfect combination of extreme talent and fantastic attitude. You know, someone who's just like enjoying it so incredibly much, and he's full of enthusiasm, and uh, he's fantastic. Yeah. So that that is the lineup for the upcoming yes. ep yes they play, play on all songs all songs yeah awesome yeah. yeah i'm super excited to hear more music from dark horse white horse before i let you go now i want to introduce you to a little section in our broadcast that we call what's in your walkman so i'd like <laughs> to ask you what you have been listening to lately anything that you would like to recommend to your fans and to our listeners? I think this is going to be a very predictable list, though. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, even though I don't make much prog, prog is what I would... I listen to a lot of prog. Um, so I have been completely uh, 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 in love with the latest uh, Caligula's Horse. Yes. Uh, album. Uh, I think I've, yeah, I've put it on repeat every time that I'm sitting for a long time in the car. I love it. Uh, uh, fav fav favorite song? <laughs> oh. oh, don't do this to me. You know, I well, I was convinced that it was Ocean Rise, and then they released this um, like in depth video from um, at the last track, which is called Ascent. Yeah. yeah. And I just love it. Yeah, I'm sure if if they ever listen to this podcast, I think they 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 should release the a, a, a vocal version of it, just like isolated vocal tracks of the songs. Because uh, well, I'm a big fan of uh, of James's vocals, so I've been listening to that a lot. Me, me too. I can relate. <laughs> I think there was there was a YouTube video of some multi-layered vocal section of one of the last albums of one section that just a cappella I'll, i'll have to look it up i'll send it to you in, uh, after this uh if I, if i find it i think that, oh, that, was, that was super amazing of course i mean it's jim <laughs> who are we kidding <laughs> i know right and I, i love them because their music is very complex and there's a lot going on it's very proggy But the melodies are just so beautiful. And I have the same thing with Leprous, for instance. I love Leprous um, to death. And because they recently had this uh, um, live uh, show yeah. that I loved, um, I've been playing a lot of Leprous. <laughs> so, <laughs> very in brand with the podcast. Uh, also a lot of Devin Townsend. Gojira, because I always go back to Gojira whenever I don't know what to listen to. Um, so what, what did you think of the new song and video they put out like what, one, two months ago or something? Another World? Have you seen the video? Like this animated no, vid video? I haven't. Oh my God. Wait, there's a new Gojira out. What are you talking about? It was just one single and, and the super cool animated video. I, but it oh, could be that it's all already like three months uh, ago. Yeah, it's right there. How could I miss this? <laughs> but I recommend watching the video. It's like super, I super cool uh, uh, animated stuff and, and all that. Brilliant. You know? yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also have a... a Apart from the new Gojira, I have a couple of recommendations. What's what was in in, in in my Walkman and uh, the last days? Um, apart from the 
new Woodkid album that I've been jamming like on repeat. The uh, the the more prog metal thing that I've been listening to, and that's actually out on October twenty third. So it will be out when you guys will be listening to this. Is from Romania, a band called White Walls, and their new album Grander is the bomb. It's super amazing. Mm-hmm. I I'm, I've been listening to it a lot in the last week, and I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Duly noted. Um, a very new single um, from a Swedish project called Limbo, and it features Adam Jansi on drums from Vola. And the oh, single is called crazy. A Thousand Windows. It's, it's out on October 30th uh, as well, like, like the Dark Horse White Horse song that will be released on the streaming uh, platforms on yeah. that day. And finally, I have mentioned them already a couple of times, I think, in the last episodes, maybe. But funnily enough, it was your birthday two days ago, right? And it is today is the birthday of the singer and mastermind of German prog metal band Chaos Bay. And they have a brilliant new album out, uh, which is called Asylum. So I want to wish... Uh, <laughs> Jan listing a happy birthday and uh, you guys out there go check out Chaos Bay's new album Asylum. This is great, man. You're leaving me with new music recommendations, which I <laughs> always appreciate. <laughs> yeah, could, could could see you digging those artists absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, Love it. L- Limbo would be the the Swedish uh, band would be by far the heaviest is like yeah, some some brutal Mashuga stuff going on. Ooh. And uh yeah, White Walls and Chaos Bay both have 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 both the melody and the brutality. <laughs> Brilliant. Sounds like a good combo. Yes. All right, Marcellus, thank you for taking the time. I uh, wish you all the best with your new band, Dark Horse, White Horse. And as I said, Thanks. I'm super excited to, yeah, to see, to hear the next um, musical steps. Yes, uh, I'm very excited to show you guys. Yeah, I'm very proud of this. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it. <laughs> all right, guys out there, check out the Dark Horse, White Horse single, Black Hole. Thank you for listening, and as always, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and listen to great music. The Progcast is a production of Stuus Media and is presented by The Prog Space. It is produced by Randy M. Salo, Janine Stengel-Lewis, Blake Lewis, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not An Elephant, and Van Kirsch does our graphics. New episodes of the podcast drop every Monday and Thursday. And don't miss our Friday Top 5 episode where we discuss our favorite new releases from that week. For more interviews and reviews in the written form, check out theprogspace.com. <laughs>